Welcome to the first session for SQL Light. Beginning with SQL Light, it requires to understand the concept of database, database management system, and relational database management system. Beginning with database, there are three parts to it. One is data, second is entity, and third is relationship. Data. Data can be any data, for example, data from school, university, or a corporate office. Entities. Entities can be employees, computers, salaries, login IDs, etc. These entities share relationship. For example, one ID belong to one name and one computer or one employee. Now, since this is a huge amount of data, it requires a management. So, we require a software or tool to manage this data. So, database management system is a tool or software to manage this huge data so database management system is required to manage the data now since this is a huge amount of data it also requires some maintenance so dbms helps in maintaining the data sorting is required at the times for the data so for example salary needs to be sorted in ascending or descending order so sorting function can also be performed by database management system Along with that, since it is a data from the corporate and it is sensitive, so we may require to secure the data. So securing is the one function that will be performed by database management system. Along with that, we may also require to generate reports on and on. So we require to retrieve the data. So retrieving of the data is also the task by the database management system. Now every database management system has got certain pattern to store the data which is called a schema the most popular and widely accepted schema is relational data so most popularly used schema is relational database management system coming on to a relational database management system so it has got certain advantages so first of all data is in the tabular format data is always available in the combination of rows and columns it also provides the availability of a primary key to uniquely identify each row. Along with that, indexing is also possible. So indexing, for example, if we have seen in the books at the last, there is an index that is available, which helps making such process easy. Similar process is also applied in relational database management system to make it possible to search data easily. Along with that, there is also availability of views generation. So for example, every person in the organization cannot be allowed to access the data, but he can be given the access to view the data. So views are possible to be generated in the relational database management system. Let us see the example of the relational database management system. So here we have a table which has got five columns and three rows. One is employee ID, name, login ID, computer ID and project. All of them are related to each other. So for example, employee ID 1151 is related to name John D has got login ID John D at the rate example.com. Again, this particular ID is associated with one computer, which is J3366 and it is working on the project finance. So all these columns are related to each other. Hence the name relational database management system. Welcome to the session two for SQL Lite. SQL Lite is an open source. It is an embedded database. SQLite is well known for being portable, easy to use, compact, efficient and reliable database. Since SQLite is an embedded database, embedded database means it runs independently, it works and coexists inside the application it serves. Its code is embedded as a part of the program that hosts it. To an observer, it doesn't give a glimpse of existence of the relational database. SQLite is also a versatile tool. It is a database, a programming library, a command line tool and it is also a tool to learn about relational databases. It can be used in embedded environments, websites, operating systems, scripts and applications. So it has got multiple uses. So SQLite can also be used in multiple ways. Now let us see some of the features of the SQLite. So some of the important features of SQLite are zero configuration. Zero configuration means it has a serverless architecture. So it doesn't require any installation before using it. There is no server process that needs to be configured, started or stopped. 
So SQLite does not require any configuration files. Let's talk about portability. So SQLite was designed with the aspect of portability. It gets compiled and run on Windows, Linux and Mac operating system. It works on 32-bit as well as on the 64-bit architectures. SQLite's database files are also portable like its code. So SQLite can be created on Linux workstation and can be used on Windows or Mac machines or iPhone or any other device. Now let's look at another feature which is compactness. SQLite is lightweight and self-contained. It requires one header file, one library and no external database is required. SQLite databases are ordinary operating system files. Regardless of any system, all objects in SQLite database triggers, tables, schemas, indexes, views are contained in one system file. Let's look at the another feature that is simplicity. SQLite is a programming language, so it has a simple and easy to use application programming interface. The API is well documented. There are vast number of languages and library interfaces with which SQLite can be used. So extensions are also available in Perl, Python and Ruby. Another feature is liberal licensing. So codes of SQL are available in public domain. So no license is required. Copyright claim is not made on any part of the source code. Coming on to the reliability. SQLite source code is well written. SQLite code base has about 70,000 lines of standard NCIC that are clean and well documented. Code base is approachable, easy to understand, easy to customize and accessible. Next is flexibility. It does not require large database server configuration, no networking or connectivity problems, no platform limitations and no licensing fees is required. Last is self-contained. So SQLite does not require any access to external database. Everything is available in the SQLite interface itself. Hence it also has a feature that is self-contained. Welcome to the third session for SQLite. Here we have to focus on installing SQLite on Windows. So there are three steps. One is to go on to the www.sqlite.org and into the download section. We have to download pre-compiled binaries for Windows. Coming on to sql.org, we have to go on the download section and here we have to look for pre-compiled binaries for Windows and download it. Once you have downloaded the required setup files, you have to extract the contents to the location pointed out by the command prompt. For my purpose, it is pointing out to C, user and Edionix. So we'll extract it here. After you open this zip file, we'll come across three different files. One is sqldiff.exe, sql3.exe and sql3analyzer.exe and you're supposed to extract this to a location pointed by your command prompt. So I have extracted here users edionics and inside edionics I have to I have already extracted as a SQL light. Once you have extracted to check whether it is been working or not you can go and type SQL SQLite 3 and there it will show you the version of SQLite 3.17.0 the date and along with that enter dot help for usage in so you can try out dot help command press enter and it will show you all the help section displayed in front of you.